Hello everybody, this is Seether Court here, and welcome to the next episode of Seether Talks. Today's episode of Seether Talks is going to be a fun one for me. The reason that I say this is for two different reasons. The first reason is because we're going to be discussing video games mixed with furries, and the second reason is because I have a story to tell you guys involving a said video game involving furries. And the game that we're going to be talking about today is none other than what makes up at least half of the porn on Fur Affinity. Pokemon. Hey, hey, want to see this cute yellow rat animal that I caught and put in this small little ball? Sure! <laughs> I thought about making a video on this due to the hype and popularity currently going around about Pokemon Detective Pikachu, the movie, that has just recently been released in theaters. So I'm going to start off the first half of this video involving my thoughts on the franchise as a whole and how I feel about it being involved with the furry fandom as well. If you guys didn't already know from a few of my previous videos, I'm a big Nintendo guy. I'm familiar with a lot of Nintendo's franchises and own most of both of their home and handheld game systems. I must state that I am not that big of a Pokemon fan, however. Now, I'm not saying that I don't enjoy the franchise at all. I have played my fair share of games in the franchise and have general knowledge about most of the games. It's just that I'm not as invested into the franchise as much as I am Super Mario, Legend of Zelda, Pikmin, and Animal Crossing. Also, I've never really been that much of an RPG kind of guy. When it comes to which games in the franchise I have invested my time into, they would have to be both Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green for the Game Boy Advance, which are both remakes of Pokemon Red and Green for the original Game Boy. I've also put my fair share of time into both Pokemon Diamond and Pearl for the Nintendo DS. And lastly, I was a huge fan of Pokemon Stadium for the Nintendo 64 back when I was really young. That game to me was just amazing and overall so much fun. Now when it comes to the viewpoints of gamers, Pokemon for the most part is a very well received video game franchise. And when it comes to the hardcore Pokemon fans, they have also for the most part appreciated and thought well of most of the games in the franchise, with only a few that were not that very well received. Now when it comes to furries and Pokemon, <laughs> I typically like to joke around quite a bit on this channel, but when I say that furries love Pokemon, I mean that they really love Pokemon. When it comes to not safe for work content within the fandom, there is so much artwork and drawings of these Pokemon out there that the only other franchise that I see rivaling the amount of porn that Pokemon has is Zootopia and Undertale slash Deltarune. I want you to kill me! Now I know that I'm making fun of it and all, but think about it logically. There are literally hundreds upon hundreds of different Pokemon spanning across multiple generations of games that basically give furries a ton of references for porn. And I'm not trying to say that this is a bad thing, because you can do whatever you want as long as it's not hurting anyone at all. But I just find the fact that there is so much porn of it to be so, so funny. Now I must add, on a more safer work side of things, the Pokemon franchise is home to tons and tons of awesome fan art and fursuits as well from furries. So I'll also give it that, and I do enjoy how Pokemon inspires these furries' artistic skills to create more Pokemon-related content within the community. Now let's get into the second half of this video, which is going to be a fun little story involving my experience with one of the Pokemon games. Which I must say that this is probably both the most epic and also the cringiest slash noobish thing that I've ever done in a video game. And that is myself attempting to beat both Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green only using a starting Charmander. Now remember that I attempted this twice, once for each version of the game. The reason why was because I originally had only Leaf Green with the Pearl Blue Game Boy Advance SP, and then I lost it along with my copy of the game, and then I eventually saved up and got Fire Red along with the Flame Red Game Boy Advance SP. The reason that I was encouraged to do this growing up was because I was already really dumb when it came to RPGs, and I got really frustrated having difficulties with trying to understand which type attacked better on this other type. So then eventually I just said, screw it, I'm just gonna start over and overpower my Charmander and then only get to another Pokemon when it's required to beat the game. Oh my god, I remember vividly back around 13 or 14 years ago doing this and remembered how much of a train wreck that was. I think that I got my Charmander evolved to a Charizard and it was around a level 50 plus something near the end of the game. I remember that the biggest challenge that I had to face throughout the insane playthrough was when I had to go through the rock tunnel. I went into it without getting the flashlight beforehand, so I couldn't even see while I was in there, and I also didn't have a rope so I couldn't escape if I got lost either. And even on top of that, I did inevitably get lost and wanted to start over outside the cave, so I decided that I'll just let my Pokemon faint so I can respond at the last health center. But then I realized that Charizard was so freaking overpowered that it barely took any damage when it got hit by enemies. So it was going to take me forever to get out of there. I think that I spent at least 5 hours trying to get out of the tunnel and that it was probably the biggest nightmare of a gaming experience I ever had growing up. I eventually got to the Elite Four, 
which was the final four trainers you had to face before taking on the Elite Four champion, which was your rival throughout the game. And I do remember making it only to the second Elite Four member before finally giving up after multiple failed attempts. So I will say that overall it was kind of insane what I was trying to do, and I did end up failing in the end. But on the bright side, it was definitely one hell of a ride and is one of the most memorable gaming experiences that I've ever had. And that overall pretty much wraps up this episode of Seether Talks for today. How'd you guys feel about Pokemon within the furry community and how it's represented through furries? How do you feel about my experience with trying to beat Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green with only using Charizard? Let me know down in the comment section down below. If you enjoy my content and want to further help out my channel, please consider donating to my Patreon page and my coffee, hitting that like button, turning on the notification bell, and subscribing altogether. I have been SeetherCord, and I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye, everyone. We're lucky we're doing a pacifist playthrough, because if we just did a normal neutral playthrough, everyone in the comments would just be like, Why'd you kill them? Why, Why would you kill them? I like that character. Dead. Just when you say dead, I died in the game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what? <That> <laughs> I forgot you died in this part. a more safer work of course just right when i'm fucking recording that's when the guy outside on the lawnmower has to go rah, 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 rah. just take your time just just take your time i can wait all day